Some of the greatest football players ever have learned time and time again that it's a team game. If that weren't the case, then these all-time greats wouldn't have retired without a Super Bowl. Whether it was simply playing on a bad team, being on the wrong side of luck in the postseason, or just bad timing, so many NFL legends never managed to get their hands on the Lombardi Trophy. Before we get started, we wanted to point out that guys who played in the pre-Super Bowl era were not included in this list for obvious reasons. With that, let's dive into the best player at every position who never won a Super Bowl. Offense Quarterback Dan Marino this is an easy one. Fair or not, quarterbacks are always judged by how many Super Bowls they won. If Marino captured one or two Lombardi trophies, he would be right up there on the Mount Rushmore of NFL quarterbacks. The nine-time Pro Bowler and 1984 NFL MVP somehow managed to reach just one Super Bowl during his illustrious career with the Miami Dolphins. That was Super Bowl 19, where Marino and company were throttled 38-16 by Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers. Marino was the most dangerous and efficient passer of his era. Sadly, his legacy is defined by being the greatest QB to never win a Super Bowl. That's just how great he was. Wide receiver Randy Moss Jerry Rice may be the goat of wide receivers, but one can argue that Moss was more talented. He had the perfect combination of size, speed, hands, athleticism, and physicality. The six-time pro bowler just couldn't catch a break when it came to the postseason, though. He was on the 1998 Minnesota Vikings team that won 15 games with a record-setting offense. Of course, they lost the NFC Championship game at home to the Atlanta Falcons. Moss should have had the game-winning touchdown in Super Bowl 42, which should have clinched the New England Patriots' perfect 19-0 season, too bad that David Tyree helmet catch happened. Moss's final NFL game was Super Bowl 47 between his 49ers and Baltimore Ravens. Unfortunately for Moss, it was Ray Lewis who got to retire as a champion. Moss called it quits after the 2012 season, thus clinching his case as the GOAT of all non-Super Bowl winning receivers. Running back Barry Sanders. There are so many all-time great running backs who never won a Super Bowl. LaDainian Tomlinson, Curtis Martin, and Thermos Thomas all come to mind. And plenty of great running backs from the 21st century will join that list. But none of them were as dominant as Detroit Lions icon Barry Sanders. Unfortunately, the franchise was unable to fully build around their top star, and Sanders often had to carry the team on his own. Sanders only got to suit up for six total playoff games during his 10-year career, which spanned from 1989 to 98. In fact, the Lions only won a single postseason game in Sanders' tenure. They got as far as the 1991 NFC Championship game, otherwise it was one and done or no playoffs at all for them. And so, the 10-time Pro Bowler and 1997 League MVP had to retire ringless. What a shame. He truly deserved a ring more than most. The fullback, Lorenzo Neal. Any NFL running back who dreamed of 1,000-yard seasons had one simple job. Play for whichever team Lorenzo Neal was on. Neal was on a team with a 1,000-yard rusher and 11 straight seasons from 1997 to 2007. That's not a coincidence. He was an elite blocking fullback. The list of backs he blocked for includes Tomlinson, Warwick Dunn, Eddie George, and Adrian Morrell. The four-time Pro Bowler reached Super Bowl 34 with the Tennessee Titans, where they fell to the St. Louis Rams by a final score of 23-16. He made the AFC Championship game in back-to-back -back years with the San Diego Chargers and Baltimore Ravens in 2007 and 2008, respectively. Neal's team lost Lost both times, however, making him the greatest fullback to never win it all. Tight end, Tony Gonzalez. Gonzalez is widely regarded as the greatest tight end in NFL history, and rightfully so. He's the position's all-time leader in receiving yards and receptions. Unfortunately, Gonzalez spent most of his career on a Kansas City Chiefs team that couldn't get it done in the postseason. They went one and done in the 1997, 2003, and 2006 postseasons. Gonzalez was traded to the Atlanta Falcons in 2010, hoping to finally receive some playoff serendipity. Unfortunately, it was more of the same for the 14-time Pro Bowler. The Falcons went one and done in 2010 and 2011. Finally, they won their 2012 NFC Divisional Round matchup against the Seattle Seahawks, giving Gonzalez his first career playoff win. But it was only more heartbreak for TG, as the Falcons lost at home to the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Gonzalez retired after the 2013 season. The six-time first-team All-Pro and Hall of Famer really deserved better than one career playoff win. Center. 
Jim Otto. The Raiders legend just barely missed the franchise Super Bowl glory years. The Hall of Famer center spent his entire career with the Raiders, which spanned from 1960 to 1974. He was also a nine-time AFL All-Star who guided the Raiders to the AFL Championship in 1967. The Raiders unfortunately lost three AFC Championship games near the tail end of Otto's career in 1970, 1973, and 1974. The team won its first Super Bowl championship in the 1976 campaign, two years after Otto played his final NFL campaign. What a shame, because he was the heart and soul of that Raiders team. Man, he more than deserved a ring. At least he won it all in the AFL. Guard? John Hanna. He didn't play in the New England Patriots dynasty years with Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, but Hanna is right up there with the all-time franchise icons. This man was the true face of the Patriots long before Belichick and Brady. Hanna was as reliable as they got for offensive linemen, as evidenced by his selections to the 1970s and 1980s all-decade teams. He was also a nine-time Pro Bowler and a ten-time first-team All-Pro. The Patriots reached Super Bowl 20 in 1985, Hanna's swan song season, but they weren't able to send him out on top. Rather, they got absolutely manhandled by the Chicago Bears, losing 46-10. to Tackle Anthony Munoz Not only is he the greatest offensive tackle that didn't win a Super Bowl, but Munoz is probably the greatest offensive lineman of all time, period. The Cincinnati Bengals was the protector for two MVP winning quarterbacks, Ken Anderson in 1981 and Boomer Esiason in 1988. The nine-time first-team All-Pro was also named to the NFL's 75th and 100th anniversary all-time teams. Munoz guided the Bengals to Super Bowl 16 and Super Bowl 23 appearances, but they narrowly lost both of them to Joe Montana's 49ers. Unlike most people on this list, Munoz was oh so close on multiple occasions, it just wasn't meant to be. And so, rounds out the all never won a Super Bowl team on offense. Let's move on to defense. Defense. Defensive end, Deacon Jones. Jones was the man who came up with the football term, sacks. Fitting too, because he was a sack machine. Jones anchored the Los Angeles Rams secondary for 11 years from 1961 to 1971. But the team, to put it mildly, just wasn't very good during his prime years. They eventually emerged as a force in the NFC, but that was after Jones left to play for the San Diego Chargers in 1972. After two seasons with the Chargers, Jones joined Washington for his swan song 1974 season. Just imagine if he was on the Rams that year instead. Perhaps he would have helped them avoid a heartbreaking loss to Minnesota in the NFC Championship game. Other than the lack of Super Bowl rings, it was a phenomenal career for the two-time Defensive Player of the Year and five-time First Team All-Pro. Defensive tackle, Merlin Olsen. Jones wasn't the only all-time Rams great on defense who didn't win a Super Bowl. Merlin Olsen is also on the list. These two, along with Rosie Greer and Lamar Lundy, formed a dynamic pass rushing unit known as the Fearsome Foursome. Unlike Jones, Olsen was on multiple powerhouse Rams teams that got close to winning it all. They reached the NFC Championship game in each of his final three seasons from 1974 to 76, but the Rams just couldn't break through. The 14-time Pro Bowler gave it his all for the Rams. Sadly, they just weren't able to bring home the big one. Linebacker Dick Butkus the Chicago Bears icon, often considered to be the greatest linebacker ever, never suited up in a single playoff game. The Bears just weren't able to build around his intimidating freak of nature. He was the heart and soul for that team during his playing career, but Butkus unfortunately didn't get to experience a whole lot of winning at the professional level. In so many ways, the Bears wasted the prime of the two-time defensive player of the year. What a shame. He didn't even get a single sniff at a Lombardi trophy. Middle linebacker, Brian Urlacher. Like Butkus, Urlacher knows all too well what it's like to be a game-changing linebacker on a Bears team that couldn't win it all. The eight-time Pro Bowler and 2005 Defensive Player of the Year came close to tasting championship glory. His Bears reached Super Bowl 41, losing to Peyton Manning's Indianapolis Colts in a sloppy, rain-filled game in Miami. The Bears also reached the 2010 NFC Championship game, but they fell to the rival Green Bay Packers. Chicago only mustered three playoff wins in their Lackers Hall of Fame career. Wonder if he and Butkus ever got together to discuss their similar frustrations. Cornerback Champ Bailey most of the legendary corners came away with at least one ring. Mike Haynes, Deion Sanders, Daryl Green, Daryl Rivas, Richard Sherman, Ty Law, Mel Blount, etc., etc. 
but Denver Broncos legend Champ Bailey sadly makes our list of non-winners. No cornerback reached as many Pro Bowls as Bailey, who earned 12 selections. This lockdown corner earned three first and four second team All-Pro selections in his illustrious career. The Broncos did get to the 2005 AFC Championship game with Bailey, though they lost to the Steelers. They reached Super Bowl 48 against the Seattle Seahawks, which was an ugly blowout loss for Denver. That turned out to be Bailey's final NFL season. Like Moss and Hannah, his final NFL game was a true heartbreaker, a Super Bowl loss. Strong safety, Ken Houston. Like Deacon Jones and Jim Otto, Ken Houston left a team shortly before they emerged as a powerhouse. Just unfortunate timing is all. The Hall of Famer and 12-time Pro Bowler played his first six seasons with the Houston Oilers from 1967 to 72. In 73, he was traded to Washington, where Houston would continue his Hall of Fame play. Houston retired after the 1980 campaign, which is unfortunate in a way, because Washington won its first ever Super Bowl in the 1982 season. And they reached the big dance again the following year, losing to the Raiders. Having retired before the parade, Houston went down as one of the all-time best to never win it all. Free safety, Paul Krause. Is there a single NFL player who endured more heartbreaking defeats than Kraus? If so, we'd love to hear about them. Kraus is the all-time leader in interceptions with 81. The eight-time pro bowler spent four seasons in Washington from 1964 to 67 before joining the Vikings in 1968, where he'd spend the next 12 years. Kraus enjoyed his time on a star-studded Vikings defense that included Hall of Famers Carl Eller and Alan Page. The team was also led by Hall of Fame quarterback Fran Tarkington. These Vikings reached four Super Bowls between the 1969 and 76 seasons. They lost every single one of them by double digit points. Close, but not close enough. The elite ball hawker did all he could to reach the top, but the Vikings just couldn't pull through when it mattered most. The kicker, Morton Anderson. Perhaps the only reason Anderson isn't considered the greatest kicker of all time is because he doesn't have four Super Bowl rings like Adam Vinatieri. Anderson was as reliable as they came during his 26-year career, which spanned from 1982 to 2007. He was a seven-time Pro Bowler and a five-team first-team All-Pro who was named to the 1980s and 1990s All-Decade teams. Anderson's teams made the playoffs eight times. He kicked the game-winning field goal for the Atlanta Falcons in overtime of the 1998 NFC Championship game against Minnesota. Unfortunately, they were no match for John Elway's Broncos in Super Bowl 33. Anderson made 565 career field goals, but unfortunately, his reliability, consistency, and clutch kicking weren't enough to win a Super Bowl. Punter Shane Leckler Hard for punters to get to the Hall of Fame, but Leckler sure made a strong case. He averaged 47.6 yards per punt in his career, which stands as an NFL record. He led the league in punting yards four times and was a seven-time Pro Bowler, six-time first-team All-Pro, and a three-time second-team All-Pro. Named to the 2000s and 2010s All-Decade teams, Leckler sadly spent most of his career on a lowly Oakland Raiders or mediocre Houston Texans team. His Raiders did make Super Bowl 37, but they were crushed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's as close as Leckler would get to saving himself from the greatest punter to never win it all status. He retired in the 2019 offseason. But hey, what changes would you make to our list? Join us in the comment section below. But if you liked this video and learned a thing or two, click the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.